So we've covered car choice, we've covered career mode, and we've covered training. Now let's get a bit more in depth here with episode 4 of Beginner's Guide to Rocket League, Control. In this one, we'll be getting in depth with car control, ball control, control over gameplay situations, and some measures you can take to ensure you're always on top of every situation. Let's get into our first topic, which is car control. Car control is a very important thing to know, although most of us do already have some form of control, there's always room for improvement. As covered in my previous video, training is a great place to start. I said something in the previous video that I feel I should reiterate into a more suitable choice of wording. When I stated that spinning around in the air and dribbling around like a madman wasn't effective and wouldn't get you far, I meant it in the sense of what I covered in that video, that doing those things were not essential in what I was trying to put across in the previous video. Now that that's cleared up, I'm going to start off with exactly those two things. An excellent way to learn car control, specifically aerial control, is to actually get up in the air and spin and dribble around like a madman. Again, this was not relevant to what I was trying to put across in my previous video, so apologies for the confusion. It's great to get up in the air and just try and stay up as long as possible, doing spins and flips and practicing recovering from dead zones, which is where your car goes out of control and you aren't able to recover it. With proper practice, you can almost eliminate that. So I suggest, say, 5 minutes of keeping up in the air without spins, just flips and not using boost to simulate a loss of control situation and focus on recovering it. One thing I find myself doing to prevent this is that I always have my finger on the air roll button, not air roll left or air roll right, just the regular, and adjusting my car accordingly whilst in the air to prevent these things. Next, I recommend roughly another 5 minutes of the same, but adding in more spins and flips, going from goal to goal, and other similar activities to practice your air control further. Now let's move on to ground control. Most of you guys should have ground control down pat because essentially you come to grips with it way before you're up in the air. This is things like dribbling, fakes, passes, and in a sense reading the ball. These are basic controls we've all learnt to adapt from day one so I won't go too in depth with this. Free play training is an excellent place to do this. As covered in my last video, free play ball chasing is a great way to start for a good mixture of air and ground control. Again, we all really know these things when it comes to ground control, so whatever you find most comfortable when practicing is what you should stick with. Everybody's ground control measures are different, so I don't feel as though there's a set regime you should go by. Next up, ball control. Ball control ties in pretty closely with that previous topic, but let's expand on it a bit. I feel ball control is mostly made up of how you can handle the ball, not losing control or putting poor touches on the ball, knowing how to read the ball's movement, and effectively adjusting the ball's direction to where you want it to be. Your positioning under and around the ball is crucial to ensuring you don't lose control or accidentally put the ball where you don't want, or making a poor pass to your teammate which can really throw off a good rotational play. This is one that comes with skill and a lot of practice, not so much any training based things you can do. The ability to read the ball and correct it is a good skill to have, otherwise you go knocking the ball away from what could have essentially been a very good play. Which segues us into our next topic, gameplay control. This, in my opinion, consists solely of reading the ball and ensuring you're capable to hand off a good pass to your teammate to set them up for a goal or keep the ball from the other team's reach. Again, this video is about control. There are a lot more things involved when it comes to reading and rotational skills, but we'll cover the different aspects in a later video. Again, this isn't something that is able to be practiced in training, you need to learn as you go more or less. Show confidence in the fact that you'll be able to read the ball and redirect it to suit, and in turn your teammate will put trust in you to make the right decision, which is a major confidence boost. Don't shy away from the ball just because the enemy team is also planning to go for it. Take advantage of the situation, otherwise you could be missing out on a good touch. To finish up, let's touch on control measures. This strays away from car and ball control and steps more into situational awareness. This is probably the most important control, being aware of your surroundings, your teammates position, the enemy team's position and your position is crucial. Failure to do so and just focusing on you and the ball can lead to ball chasing and more or less throws the rest of these topics out the window. You need to know where the ball is, where it's going, where your teammate is positioned and in case you need to pass. Where the other team is, in case they are in perfect position to intercept the pass or block your push and be able to plot an ideal route in your head where you think is the best to go and know that you've got other options by knowing your teammate's position. This comes with time and a lot of in-game practice, but be patient and you'll have complete control of every situation. That'll be it for this one. Let me know in the comments if there's anything you feel I've missed or didn't quite explain enough, and I'll aim to do a part two because it's a very mixed opinions topic. So this is just a, sort of a basic coverage of those things. Like I said, if you guys want me to do a part two, I'll work on a part two and go more in depth with the individual uh, basis of each. 
that's it for this one thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in the next one